terms of diuresis, exactly what we are talking about. As agents of the company, directors have a fiduciary duty to the company. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Agents of the company, directors have a fiduciary duty to the company. A fiduciary duty is a duty of trust. Like we said, right? A relationship that involves trust. Trust, trust, trust. A director, therefore, is expected to act in good faith Act in good faith, so you don't put your interests and be in um, before the interest of the company. So that's the same way in politics as well. That's the way it's expected to be, but unfortunately, it is not. <laughs> you must not put your personal interests before the interest of the country, but unfortunately. Unfortunately, it is not. Unfortunately, it is not. Okay. Now let's talk about agency law and the direct and challenging the actions of directors. Agency law and challenging the actions of directors. Challenging the actions of directors. What do we mean by challenging the actions of directors? Okay. When it comes to practical terms, right? It comes to very, very practical terms. It is very difficult for owners. Just think about it. How owners challenge the action of directors? What do you have? What do you think they can do? If I'm owner, if I'm an owner, I have a share in let's say Echo Bank. How do you think I can challenge directors? Okay, let's find out. In practical terms, it is very difficult for shareholders to use the law to challenge the decisions and actions of the company's directors. If shareholders believe that directors are not acting in the best interest of the company, like we've already indicated, the ability to do something about it is restricted. It is quite difficult, basically. It is quite difficult. If I own shares at Microsoft and I don't like the way the company is being run, what can, how much can I do? You know, I can't go and sack the director there or the directors there. The best thing is that if I don't like to be, I have to sell my shares. But you can't really, really challenge their decisions. The shareholders can vote to remove any director, so you can use your voting rights to do it. But the restriction here is that to do this, you need majority votes. So what I was trying to say is that on a personal level, I can't do much. Unless it's an, it becomes an aggregate problem where a bunch of shareholders think that, you know what, these directors, they just suck. They are not doing well, so we need to take them out. And then, if it's on a, it's a personal thing, it becomes difficult to challenge. It becomes very, very difficult to challenge. In a court of law, shareholders would have to demonstrate that the directors were acting against the interest of the company or against the clear interest of particular shareholders in order to persuade the courts. So it's quite difficult. If you go and stand in court, too, you must <laughs> you must demonstrate. Now, when a lawyer says demonstrate, it means demonstrate. So, you must demonstrate that the directors were actually acting against their interest. You know, and that requires some efforts. You know, that requires some efforts. Yeah. So, um, so I think when you look at the whole PAC Public Accounts Committee thing, right, and you check, you know. You know what they were one of the things is they were checking for is a demonstration um 
they were checking to see if these management committee members or whoever they were were actually acting in the interests of the country or of the agency which you were serving. Okay, any questions on that? Any questions? Hey, today no questions. <laughs> Okay, it seems there are no questions, so I'll gladly continue. I'll gladly continue. Whereas agency laws deals with the legal relationship between a company and its directors, the theory of agency deals with the relationship between a company's owners and its directors. I hope this makes sense. So agency law deals with the legal relationship. Remember we said that the company is a legal entity, it's a legal person, it's a legal personality. So agency law deals with the legal relationship between the company, right? The company is a person. Never forget that. It doesn't sound like it, but in law it says, the company is a person. So it's a legal relationship between the company and its directors. The theory of agency, this with the relationship between owners and managers, which you've already known. Agency theory is based on, an, on the idea that when a company is first established, its owners are also usually its managers, which is quite true, right? When you are starting a company, you know, you don't have that complex structure in place where you separate ownership and control. Um, the owners will be the managers, they will be. And I think... Um, in customer focus limited, the owners were the managers. As a company grows, you know, so one of the things in that um, case, you know, is to whether it would make sense for them to get clean, um, is it clean eyes or what? New people who might have a fresher experience to actually manage the company, you know? Because the owners were the same as the manager. So if you get, it's like a football team where the coach, one of the players is the coach. You know, it's a good idea. Sometimes you need someone who is not in the game. Someone who is looking from afar to be able to direct everyone. And so it's like a similar situation here. As a company grows, the owners appoint managers to run the company. The owners expect managers to run the company in the best interest of the so that's what we've talked about over and over again now let's talk about the agency relationship now this is a repetition of concepts but it's necessary it's necessary it's necessary okay the agency theory was developed by two individuals called Jensen and Mecklen. And they suggested a theory of how the governance of a company is based on the conflicts of interest. So you see, when we say conflict of interests, it's very simple. It means we have diverging interests and they are clashing. between the company's owners, its managers, and major providers of debt finance. Each of these groups have their different interests and objectives. So for the shareholders, they want to increase their income and wealth, which we all know. Their managers, you know, they want their compensation. They are more into their bonuses. They are more into their remuneration packages. Providers of debt finance, um, they are more into, you know, receiving the money they've lent back. It's very, very simple. Uh, 
Any questions? There is no question. <laughs> Is it is it understandable? If it's understandable, please type yes so that I'm sure everything is going okay. Because the way no one is asking me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also let me ask, have you guys been looking at Have you guys been looking into the past questions? Please do. Mm. When I gave an assignment, only two people submitted. Don't wait uh, for pre scene the prison will come and then you see that hmm, they haven't learned anything. <laughs> the agency relationship um, is defined as a form of contract between companies owners and its managers. You know, we've talked about this over and over and over and over again. We've talked about this over and over and over, and over again. The owners expect the agents to act in their best interests of the owners. Ideally, the contract between the owners and the managers should ensure that the managers always act in the best interest of the owners, blah, blah, blah. Now let's talk about agency conflicts. So agency conflicts are simply the differences in interests of companies, owners, and managers. And how do they show or how do they manifest? Number one, so these are symptoms that you look out for your pre material. Right? Whether there's an agency co conflict or your case. Number one, moral hazard. A manager has an interest in receiving benefits from his or her position as a manager. This includes all the benefits that come from status such as company car, private chauffeur, use of a company airplane, lunches, attendance at sponsored sporting events, and so on. So a manager has an interest in receiving benefit from his or her position as a manager. So where you are using your position to derive benefits. Mm. That's what we call a moral hazard. It is not moral to use your position to derive benefits. Okay, number two, effort level. Managers may work less hard than they would if they were owners of the company, right? And this is one of the biggest problems in Ghana. If it's not our company, we work less hard. So managers may work less hard than they would if they were owners of the company. So that's also a, a conflict because there you, you as an employee or as a manager are looking for interest. So you're not putting as much effort. And this lack of effort could lead to lower profits and lower share price. So you see, you see the problems that are arising. Number three, earnings retention. The remuneration of directors and senior managers is often related to the size of the company rather than its profits. This gives managers an incentive to grow the company and increase its sales turnover and assets rather than to increase the returns of company shareholders. Managements are more likely to want to reinvest profits in order to make the company bigger rather than pay out profits as dividends. When this happens, companies might invest in capital investment projects where the expected profitability is quite small and the net present value might be negative. So basically what we are saying here is that um, what we are saying here is that um, there's a conflict of interest with regard to earnings retention, right? So um, since um, shareholders are looking more at long-term wealth, shareholder maximization, 
they would be more willing to plow back, right? Profits back into the business, which pushes, you know, which in turn will help the company to yield more profits, push their share price and push shareholder wealth. Now, managers' interests are quite different because the manager career, he sees that one, it's not his company and they might leave soon. So earnings retention might not necessarily, they would rather receive dividends or they would rather receive bonuses, you know, rather than plowing back into the company. Uh -huh. So this is where some of the issues arise. Another thing is risk aversion. Risk aversion. Executive directors and senior managers usually earn most of their income from the company they work for. They are therefore interested in the stability of their company because this will protect their job and their future income. So what does it mean for a manager? A manager or the management would be a lot more risk averse. They wouldn't want to take any risk that would jeopardize their job security. So they might not invest into high risk projects. And the higher the risk, the higher the um, profits or the return, right? So for management, there might be some form of risk aversion. And that is a, it's a conflict. It's a conflict. Please, these points, don't go into the exam without knowing. Yeah. Hmm. Time horizon. Shareholders are concerned about the long-term financial prospects of their company because the value of their shares depend on expectations for long-term future. In contract, managers might only be interested in the short term. So there's a conflict in terms of time horizon. Managers are interested in short term. Um, shareholders are interested in the long term. You know, so managers are more focused on or management is more focused on, um, on what do you call it? Bonuses and all that now. And how shareholders are looking at the long term. Now, agency costs. Agency costs. What are agency costs? These are the cost of having an agent to make decisions on behalf of a principal. The cost of having an agent. So, to make someone act on your behalf, you have to you have to incur some costs. You have to pay the person. Applying this to corporate governance, agency costs are the costs that shareholders incur by having managers to run the company instead of running the company themselves. So, basically, you have to compensate agents. You have to compensate agents. You can't do everything by yourself. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. You can't do every single thing by yourself. You can't do every single thing by yourself. Agency costs do not exist when the owners and the managers are the same individuals, right? <laughs> if they are the same individuals, where do agency costs? You know? Except I don't think anyone who's, except maybe you want to be greedy and pay yourself a lot, you know, but generally that doesn't exist. Agency costs start to arise as soon as shareholders are not directors of the company. One thing we need to know is that agency costs are very high in very large companies. When you go to large companies, if you look at the salary of directors, who can guess the salary of um, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft? Just type what do you think? How much do you think Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, is? Type it in the chat. In dollars. Not Ghana cities, please. Just a guess, please. I'm waiting on. Just a guess, a guess, hey, a guess, okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, please. Only one person has voted. 
what is his total compensation? If you add everything. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, some people have voted. <laughs> <Hey>. Someone said fifty thousand dollars per month. Okay, so his salary as of twenty twenty was two point five million dollars. That's only his salary, right? But he had a cash bonus of 11 million dollars and he had stock awards of 30 million dollars so overall he had about 44 million dollars <laughs> <In a year. laughs> 